Okay, so what was our first chunk? Setting up the easy bib. Yeah, setting up easy bib, right? We set up easy bib. So when I set up easy bib and we created accounts, what did you use to create your easy bib account? Say a little louder so everybody can hear you. Your FSA email and password. Right, so you're logging in, you're going to use Google to log in. Uh -huh. Right, that's, that's the first thing we did. And we set up a thing called, what, what, did the, what was the name of the project we created inside of EasyBib? Do you remember? Somebody I haven't heard from before. What was the name of the project we created inside there? What was it called? Do you remember? It was like the breakfast. No? It was a place to hold all, all of our citations, right? So what did we what did we call it? Intro, work, cited, and then your name, right? Oh, yeah. So there's a project waiting for you inside of EasyBib, right? Mm -hmm. It's just waiting for you to put things in. So today, we're going to talk about how we're going to do that part, okay? So this is the next chunk, getting into EasyBib. And I'm going to model for you how I search. Because some people always say, Mrs. Miller, I just don't know where to start. I don't understand how to get this going. So I'm going to show you how I would start doing some research and then how I use EasyBib to help me track my research process. This isn't, this isn't just for this project. You're going to use this for all the projects you do this year for research, especially for your STEM projects. So if you get in the habit of doing the things I'm going to model for you today, it'll make things a lot easier for you, okay? All right, so now last time we were together, that was the second chunk. What was the second chunk? What did we do last time we were together? Uh, crap. Uh, to see if a website was... Oh, yeah, I the website to do a test. What kind yeah. of test? Uh, crap test. So we did the crap test, right? Yeah. So we were crap testing all the sites last time, all right? So just to remind me, Again, tell me, what does the C in CRAP stand for? Um, the C, what does the C stand for? Citation. No, it's not citation. You might want to pay attention because I'm going to quiz all the classes on this. So C stood for currency, right? <coughs> Timeliness of the information. Timeliness of the information. I'm looking for things like, when am I going to see um, a date um, when this was posted or updated or published. So currency. Sometimes currency is going to be really important if I'm looking at, if I'm researching a topic that I need timely information, information in the last couple of months or couple of weeks. I want to make sure I'm looking at information that's probably more timely. If I'm looking at topics that have been around for a while, there's been a lot of research, then we're going to be looking at dates that may not be quite as current, but we still want to make sure that the site is still a, a, a good site when we're going to talk about next piece of that, which is the R. What does the R stand for? Does anybody remember the R stands for? Recency. No, not recency. Uh, that'd be like currency. Relative. Relative. Relevancy. Relevancy, yes, relevancy. So what does it need to be relevant? So if I'm looking at a source, what does it mean that it's relevant? Thanks for raising your hand. Like it's relevant to topic. Yeah, it means something to you, right? Yeah, like it's on topic, it's yeah. speaking to you, there's information there that you can use. It's actually relevant to what you're doing. Sometimes we may not know that right away. Sometimes we have to read off the whole thing before we know whether it's relevant. So don't just write off something because the first couple sentences don't, don't seem relevant. Keep reading, you might find relevant information. All right, my first A in the crap test. I have two A's, what's my first A? Your hand's up all the time, what's the first A? Give me one of the A's. Give me just one of them. Accuracy. Yeah, so what about accuracy? What are we looking for when we look at accuracy? So sometimes when we're looking for accuracy, we don't know if it's accurate or not because we're not an expert on the topic, right? If I get to a really good site about cheetahs, I'm not a cheetah expert, so I don't know that's accurate. So I'm going to be looking for some other things to tell me if it's accurate. So what are some things I'll look for to tell me whether a site is accurate? So I don't, I'm not the expert, but I'm looking for some things that will help me figure out if that site might be from somebody who knows what they're talking about. There's some little things I'm looking for. Look for last update. Possibly update the, the date of the site won't be as important to me initially as what? Like what if I look at this? Site? What if I look at this? Site? A lot of typos, or there's a lot of grammar errors. Is that a very accurate? No. Yeah. So that's probably going to make me want to question that. Now, having said that, we looked at a site a little while ago that looked like it might have been a good website, but there was like one typo on the site, um, and it looked like the site might not be um, from a, a native English speaker. So maybe they didn't know how to spell that word, or they were typing so fast that they just messed it up. Doesn't mean I'm gonna rule out the site 100%, but if I see lots of typos and lots of grammar errors and I'm just not understanding the site and it just doesn't look like it was really cared for, I'm gonna blow that site off and move on to something else. Okay, so accuracy, okay, accuracy. So what's my other A? I have, I just did the C, the R, I did A, I have another A. Um, 
So I know maybe when it was published, I know that it's relevant to my topic. I know that um, it's, a, it's a good site that I don't see any typos. I see somebody took some care with it. It's accurate. All the links work. Oh, there's no grammar errors. What's the next thing I'm probably going to look for? If I've written a site about cheetahs, what are you going to want to know about me? Author. Author. So we're going to stretch that. The A stands for authority. So what is the authority behind that site, right? What is the authority? So what is who is my author? Who's my sponsor? Who's my publisher? Can I find out anything about their credentials? Can I see an about me link or is there a bio link? Can I take the author's name and put it into Google and search and see what other things they have done and see how I, if I feel they're credible, right? So we're looking for somebody with the right qualifications. All right, so now I've got my I've got my C, my R, my A, my A, and now I'm ready for my P. What's my P? The crap test. So I have I have some good information about its currency, its, its timeliness. I know something that's definitely relevant. It's accurate. Um, the person who wrote it has a lot of credentials. Huh? <laughs> I like that. We should have that on there though. But no, I'm thinking about the last one. Is okay now. I've written this site and it meets a lot of criteria, but what's the other question I want to ask about that site? Why was the site written? What is its purpose? Um, P is for purpose, okay? So why, what's the reason behind it? And among all of those things, one of the things I'm always keeping an eye on for, remember I talked to you guys a lot about this, So I'm looking for something about the way those sites were written. What am I trying to make sure I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for as I read all these information? No matter what the source is, a book, a magazine article, a website, um, somebody I'm interviewing, what is the thing I'm kind of keep, trying to keep track of? The purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose? Well, it's the purpose, but there's something more to the purpose. Remember we talked about bias? So somebody who's trying to persuade you one way or another for something. So keep that in mind as you're looking at these sources. We're always looking for bias. Too much bias is not a good site or a good source. This means that they have an agenda and they're trying to push you in one direction or the other. More opinion than fact can be a problem. All right, so that's what we did. So the today, what I'm going to show you for our third chunk is, like I said, how I go about searching. So I picked the topic Barbie because I saw that was one of the topics you guys had on your list. And I think your topics are going to be probably um, their prompt from the beginning of the year, the writing prompt. Does anybody remember what they wrote about at the very beginning of the year? Mm -hmm. Connor? I mean, Spencer? Airplanes. Oh, airplanes. Oh, oh. So, so significant airplanes. Of, so, for whose side? The U.S. or um, the Allies yeah, or the Axis? The U.S. The Allies or just the U.S. Yeah. Just okay. Okay. Gotcha. All yeah, right. So, so that could be a really good topic to research even further. So, I like I said, I picked Barbie because I was really curious about Barbie, having not played with Barbie in a long time. So, the very first thing I'm going to do before I start any part of my research, the first thing I want to do is I want to get into Easy Bib. So, if I'm at home and I need to get to Easy Bib, what could I do? Go to the LMC Wiki. So I'm going to come sit up here so I can get. Yeah, Flagstaff homepage. Okay. I'm going to squish in here with you. I mean, you can, so if you go to the Flagstaff Academy website, you can go into. Um, there's a ton of other links. Yeah, it's usually in the side. It's not there anymore. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can just. Open yeah, I could just do this. And then type in if I'm in Chrome, I can open up any, uh, any tab and I can just type LMC. Wiki right there. If I'm in uh, Firefox or Internet Explorer, Explorer, I usually have a side tab, a little search field that you can search on. Yeah. So I'm just going to say LMC Wiki, and I'm the first result on Google, so that's the first one that's going to come back, and we'll just click on that. And that's one way to get to it. Um, do you guys know how to get to your teacher's webpage? Yeah. Yes. yes. You can totally get to the LMC Wiki, Wiki from your teacher's webpage, too. Okay. But if all you can remember is LMC Wiki, just type that right into Google search, and it'll break, right, break it right up. All right, now I'm here. What am I going to click on? The easy bib. Oh. Easy bib, right here. All right, there I am. So kind of think of easy bib as your other brain. Okay, you've got two brains for this project. You have the brain in your head, and you're going to have the brain that's easy bib. And easy bib's going to help you remember and organize and collect all your information in one spot. That's really important, okay? That's really important. So now I'm here, and I need to log in. So what am I logging in with? Your email. You're going to stuff. You go to. Um, I'm going to click on login up here at the top. And I'm logging in with what? Google. You click oh, no. Google. Google. 
Do you go Am I logging in over here? No. Okay. No, you need to go to Google, Google. then you go to your email. Right. I'm going to click on Google and I'm going to log in with my password and my, my Gmail account and my password. For you, it's your FSA students. For me, it's FlagstaffAcademy.org. And I've been in here so many times today, it already remembered me. So I already, I'm right there. So you'll know you got in right because it'll say at the top, it should say your email address right here. All right, now remember, I said that you created a project, right? What is the name of the project we're looking for? There'll only be one in yours because you've never done anything in here before, right? So you should be looking for what? What's the name um, of the project? The, Whoa. Um, sorry, the intro works. Intro works. Work right. work so remember, EasyBib says, we call it works cited, but EasyBib calls it a what? Your bibliography. Bibliography. So that's the name of the bibliography, but it's really works cited. So I'm going to click on bibliography. It's going to open up, and it says, it says there are no citations in your project. I haven't done any research. I haven't cited anything yet. But I'm going to leave this tab open as I do my research because I want to be able to get back to it. I want it just sitting out there waiting for me. It's like having your folders open, all right? So this is that other brain. You turn that other brain on so you can do the project. All right, so here we go. Now, I am interested in Barbie, and I want to find do some research on Barbie. I'm afraid if I put in Barbie, I don't know what I'm going to get, because that seems like there's people with the name Barbie, and then there's the Barbie doll, and there's all kinds of Barbies. So I want to put some kind of limiter around it so I don't get a million different things back. Barbie dolls? So, yeah, I'm thinking Barbie <coughs> dolls, so I'm not just looking for somebody Barbie named Barbie. Barbie dolls clothes? Clothes. I could do Barbie dolls clothes. I think Barbie I'd like to learn a little bit about how Barbie came into existence. Like, where did she Barbie come from? So what's another reason? What's another there we go. That? He got it. What was it? Fair. Barbie doll history. Right. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to do... Barbie, Barbie dolls. Barbie dolls. Actually, I'm going to do Oops. history. Barbie. What is she doing? What do you notice she's doing to these words up there? She's, well, putting, them. Them. she's putting them in quotes. Why is she doing that? Because... Uh, Ladies, why do you think I'm doing that? Well, it knows it's important, and it's telling it also to do what to them when I put it in the books? To find them. Find them in, in what? In the uh, paper where someone's actually saying. Well, I'm saying that particular string. Okay, I want history Barbie doll to show up. It's like an exact phrase, right? That's what I'm looking for. Because sometimes if you don't tell Google to do that, you know, put it in quotes, Google will search on every page for Barbie, every page for doll, every page for Barbie doll, every page for history doll. I mean, it's going to do different things. It's going to mix and match it. I just want this. Now, I know Google's going to do some stuff here saying history Barbie doll Wikipedia, history Barbie doll, history timelines. I'm not going to worry about their suggestions right now. I just want to see how accurate I, I was with this particular search. So, and I know we're going to start, I'm starting in Google, and I always tell you guys to start off on the LMC Wiki, but I'm going to use both. I just happened to start on Google because I figure that's probably where you're going to start most of your stuff. So I got back 453,000 results in um, 0.21 seconds. That's pretty good. 0.21 seconds. 0.21 seconds. I know it's less than a second. <laughs> so as I'm looking through here, I'm going to show you what I kind of do when I'm looking at things. So I'm always thinking of crap test, crap test, crap test, crap test, right? I'm always thinking about that. I'm even thinking about it before I actually open up a website. So I look up here and I see Yahoo Voices, History Barbie doll. The mother's a little girl named Barbara, so I mean, so I'm not really clear about that little snippet right there. I'm not, that's not really appealing to me. Plus, it's Yahoo, and I'm like, oh, is that Yahoo Answers? I'm not really sure. Next one's the same thing, and then I get here, and I see fashiondollguide.com, Barbie doll history. They have been in numerous types of Barbies. I'm not really sure about this one either because it's a .com. I don't want to go there just yet. I want to see what else I have, and then I come down here, and I see this one. It says Barbie doll, 1958 Smithsonian Education. What do you know about the Smithsonian? It, it's, it's the biggest museum in the world. Not Pretty the big. World. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's the biggest one in the world. It might be, I don't know. But I do know the Smithsonian is a very well-recognized, credible place, right? That's the Washington, yeah. it's in Washington, D.C. It's our, sort of our national library. And lots of people have been there. You've probably been there in the Air and Space Museum. They have all kinds of different divisions. They have like a they have a museum that, um, that's dedicated to just like television shows and yeah. pop culture and things like that. They have George Washington's dentures on display at the Smithsonian. Yeah. So what do you think? Think I should try it? Yeah. Look at this teaching guide, essays, artifacts, documents, consumers, and the na nation's. I don't know. It's not a huge snippet, but just because it's Smithsonian, that's got my attention. So I'm going to click on that one. And it's got lots of... 
There we go. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So what I'm noticing about it is it looks like kind of a little self-contained psych under this thing called artifacts and documents. Writing assignments. This looks like it might have been something that might have been built for teachers who are teaching particular ideas about things like consumerism or a nation expanding. I'm not clicking on those, but this is kind of the things I'm inferring. So just on its first glance, I'm kind of inferring some things about it. All right, and there's this great picture of a really old Barbie. I can tell you my Barbie didn't look like that Barbie. And <coughs> I can read through this. So I'm going to just start reading through it, looking at it. Oh, original feature Barbie was she was an adult until she arrived on the scene. Most American dolls portrayed children as in, oh, well, portrayed as infants or baby dolls. So before Barbie came along, little girls played with dolls that looked like baby dolls or children. Oh, she was the first adult. It says here that Ruth and Elliot Candler, the founders of Barbie's maker, Mattel Inc., so those are the people who maybe invented Barbie, and that's the company that sold Barbie. And she was based on a German doll named Lily. That's kind of interesting. Extensive market research preceding Barbie's commercial release in the 1950s revealed that parents objected vehemently to Barbie's coquettish appearance. So I may not know what that word means, so I could always take this word and I could go look it up in a dictionary. I could define it. Um, I think I could actually even, yeah, there's actually a way to do that here. We could just say define that word. So I know coquettish means... She looks a little mature, and she doesn't look like the normal dolls that girls are playing with, so parents are like not really sure about this doll. Um, so Barbie, her accessories and her play sets have been marketed extensively on television since the 1950s. So since 1950, there have been commercials on television about Barbie and all of her gear. All right, I'm going to go to the next page, and I'm going to learn more about Barbie. And I notice a couple things here. I notice the title of this particular little block of text. Television advertisement for Barbie C1960. So what do you think that 1960 is? Is that about the website? No. What do the you think year. it's saying? The year, the year of what? It's the year that the television advertisements for Barbie came out. Probably. So C means like circa, around. So that doesn't mean copyright. It doesn't mean it's currency. It just means that that's the date that this article is going to talk about probably when those advertisements started to come out. And then I noticed something at the bottom. Look what it says down there. Oh, a citation. Citing the source the source for that page right right is this what I would cite no no no, no. no. I'm gonna cite what There's the, the whole source. site right the site that I'm on but look good right, job guys really good job you guys are the first class to get that to get that <laughs> so you can listen thank you I appreciate it so um the Cy Snyder wrote a book called children's television the art and business and how it works so he went to they even tell me what page they got the information from so I could always, if I wanted to, I could actually go and try to find that resource if I wanted to. So they're giving me, so this is kind of passing the crap test with flying colors, right? Um, I've got, it's relevant to me, totally relevant. It's um, got authority. It's got accuracy. I haven't seen typos or big errors. I don't see any bias in this stuff. It's just giving me the information. There's facts. There's data. Um, and it's got a purpose. The purpose was to teach us about the history of Barbie. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Oh, the purpose? And I got purpose. So I said I have relevancy, authority, accuracy. I've got purpose. What am I missing? Um, Hold on, Abby's got it for me. Currency, right. I haven't been able to find a date for this. And sometimes dates are really tricky on sites like this because it's not the main site. It's an offshoot of the main site. So when I'm really struggling and I can't find a date, and we'll go all the way, I'll just go all the way to the fourth page because I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, I'm all the way down here. I don't see anything. So here's a trick that I do. I go back up to the URL, and I take away all the excess. And I'm going to say backspace that. And now I've got just what? The Smithsonian's. Yeah, the Smithsonian's main site. So I'm going to go there and take a look at that. And here I have a bunch of information, and I see about us, contact, site map, usage, privacy. And then it's hard to see, but if you look right here... 2012. Yeah, copyright 2012. So this whole, the site that houses all that information I just found, found has a copyright date of 2012. So I'm going to remember that. And that's, that's great. I know that the Smithsonian people are probably keeping an eye on their sites, keeping an eye on the links and making sure the information has changed. Do you think this information about Barbie has probably changed a lot yeah. over time? Yeah. Probably not. It's the history of Barbie. It's not like, you know, Barbie is like um, part of the... DNA sequencing and, and, you know, planets or astrophysicists or chemistry. You know, Barbie's Barbie. She's a plastic doll, and she started around 1950, so not a lot changed. Okay, so now I've got that. I'm going to go back to my site, and I'm thinking, you know, I really want to use this site. 
I'm not even sure exactly how I'm going to use this information yet because I still need to spend more time with it. But I like the site. I don't want to forget it. I want to cite it. I'm going to cite it right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to that very first page. I'm going to grab my URL and I'm going to do a control what? I'm going to copy it. C. Control C. I'm sorry, what did you ask? Isn't the URL right there? Or no? This is the URL no, right up um, here at the top. Under the picture. No, that's just the image. It's just no, that says image. Barbie Doll Domestic Life Collection. So this is um, this was an anonymous. So this was oh. a gift. It, actually, it's kind of interesting. Smithsonian's telling us that this is an artifact in their collection. You can go there and see that doll. And it was an anonymous gift. Someone donated that in 1988 to the collection. Uh, okay. So they're not only telling us sometimes where they get the information. They're also making sure they tell us exactly where that image came from too. Really good. Really accurate. Really good. Accurate. You guys are asking good questions. Really good questions. All right, so I'm going to control C. I'm going to go to EasyBib. And EasyBib is saying, cite a website by entering its URL or by searching for it. All right. So do I have my URL? Yeah. And I'm going to do what in here? Click it. Control V. Control V. For victory. All right, so now I'm going to make sure MLA. I just said it, it wasn't a book. It wasn't a newspaper. It wasn't a journal. It wasn't a database. It wasn't any of these 59 options oh. that I could have found. And I, I could probably find an exact match for it here, but I'm just going to go with website for right now. And I'm going to say, okay, cite it. And EasyBib goes off and does this magical oh, thing. Did it, uh, oh, did I take it out? Yeah. yeah. EasyBib's smarter than me sometimes. So it does kind of an automagical thing. And there it goes. So what it's doing is EasyBib is trying to build the citation for me. Remember I told you, it's just a computer program. All right, and so you're going to have to match your brain with its brain to help it figure out what it's missing. So it's going to ask me a couple of things here. It's going to say, uh, source not evaluated. Would you like to evaluate it? So what do we use to evaluate a website? Crap test. Right, crap test. But let's say I can't remember everything, but yeah, let's go ahead and evaluate it. Easy to will remind me of all the things I should be looking for. Has the author written several articles on the topic? What do you know about the sponsor or publisher? So it doesn't say crap test, but all the elements of the crap test are right in here. So this will help me check site for bias. Oh yeah, let's remember how I do that. And so it's going to go off and give me some um, information here about, you know, so this is just a little confusing because it's, it's going to focus on the AP US history part of this instead of the Barbie part of it. So anyway, we're, so this, all these things will help me. It's all built into the system, so I'm going to click off of that. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start to look at the stuff. Okay, i got to get this right because remember, you're going to be graded on how accurate those citations are, right? And EasyBib can't always figure it out all by itself. Anytime you see these red boxes, EasyBib is telling you, I can't find that information. I didn't see it anywhere on the page you sent me. The website title, Advanced Placement US History. I don't have a publisher or a sponsor. It's asking, this is the URL. Do you want to include the URL when you build your citation? Do you want the teacher to see the URL? Yes. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do. All right, and it says electronically published. Remember, we couldn't find that publication date, and we kind of had to do that other thing. Well, EasyBib couldn't find it either because it wasn't on that particular site, that page. And then it says down here, date accessed. What does that mean, date access? It's today's the date. date. That we went into. Why do we care? Why do we have to include that? So because the day that you found it. Right, but why do I care? It. So they don't I don't put the day I open the book when I find a book as a source. So they know that. It's a website. I'm giving you a hint. It's a website. And I'm putting the date I visited it. What could happen two days later to that website? It could, well, it could be, be upgraded. It could be changed, right? That information might be gone. So I'm letting my teacher know on this date, We're it looked like that. That's what I found, all right? Okay. That's the way we let them know. Okay. So now I have to fill in some blanks here. I couldn't find an author, and I can't really put Smithsonian. I mean, I could put a corporation, but it's not a corporation. Um, so I don't want that. The other thing I don't like about this is that, yes, this was the article title, but um, actually I'm going to change that. The article title was about who? Was it about me? Yeah, so I'm going to put up here. I'm going to change this. Because that's what that page said. Remember, it said analysis of Barbie and history. So I want to do something because if I don't change this, what's going to happen is when it builds the citation, it will not mention Barbie at all in the title. So how will Mrs. Ray know? She's going to see advanced placement U.S. history, and she might think you guys are off doing AP history course in high school or college. She won't know what that necessarily means. So it's my job to give her a little more information. 
Now, just because you don't have a piece of information won't stop EasyBib from creating the citation. It's going to build it based on what you give it. So I'm going to leave Analysis and History, Barbie. I'm going to leave Advanced Placement U.S. History because that is the title of the site. Who was my publisher? Who was my sponsor? Who built the page? Smithsonian. The Smithsonian Institution. Um, can I, could I tell what, what was the date? What was the only date we could find for publication? 2012. 2012. 2012. So that's all I've got. I might have, that's, I might have a, a, a day and a month on other places, but if this is all I have, this is all I have. And then here's my date access. Now the one step I'm going to have you guys do too is look right down here. Do you see where it says add and notations? Yeah. I'm going to click on it. It's going to give me a text box where I can type some notes in here. And annotation just means you're going to take notes. And the reason we bother to do this is really two reasons. Uh, one, I want to let Mrs. Ray know why I thought that site was so great, or that source, or that book, or that article, whatever. Okay, so it means I read it, and I can tell her something about it. Two, how many sources did you need to score the maximum number of points on this project? Four. Four more. So, yeah. Four more. So, do you think whenever you do research, you're only going to have exactly the number of sources they told you to go find, yeah. teachers? Do you think you're going to have more than you might need? Probably. Probably. Right. Did anybody ever do the Animoto project in third grade? Yes. Yeah. So when you did that project, you guys took note cards. Do you remember you had a lot more note cards than you probably actually used? Mm -hmm. But that's what a good researcher is going to do. They're going to have probably more information than they'll actually end up using. So if I have ten things in my sources, in my work cited, how are you going to make, how do you know what is what? Okay, I don't remember why I put that, that thing on there, that particular source. I really want to go back and visit it, but I don't know. The notes would tell you. Exactly. So the notes are like your little way of reminding you and your teacher why you thought that was an important place or an important book or an important article. So what I'm going to put in here, and this is also a chance for me to make sure that I've read that web page or that book, and I'll put something in here. I'm going to say, um... So this is my way of telling me, okay, that's why I thought it was important. This is my way of telling Mrs. Ray, this is why I thought it was important. And when you get to high school, they're going to ask you when you turn in your work cited to annotate everything. Because teachers don't have time to figure out and go visit the URLs and do that analysis for you. They want you to do that, that work for them. So you're going to tell them through your annotation what was important. So if you're sitting in the library here or in high school and you have two books out, three websites open, and maybe a magazine and the bell rings and you gather up all your stuff and you put it away and you decide you're going to work on it at home and you're trying to recall what website you got it from or some interesting information. You wanted the name of the inventor. Where would you find that? And the, uh, no, the annotation. There you go, right? In fact, somebody had a really good point in the last class. We actually not only did, we also did a citation for a book. I have a half a book on Barbie, believe it or not. There's my Barbie book. The Good, the Bad, and the Barbie, A Doll's History and Her Impact on the U.S. So when I cited the book, someone said, hey, you know, you could use your annotation, write down very specific page numbers from the book that you want to remind yourself to go back and look at, okay? So that was a great way to use the annotation because page numbers, you know, you forget what page you were on and you can't book, you can't, this is an electronic, so you can't really bookmark it very easily. So that was another great way to do it. So um, let's say you started something on Friday, you went to the rec center out for pizza, you went to church on Sunday or something, and then Sunday afternoon you decide you're going to work on this stuff and you've got the book at home. Wouldn't it be great to be able to look at the annotations to see where you left off? Especially if the book's really big. Exactly. If the book's really big, holy cow. Well, sometimes there are reference books and you can't even take them out of a library. So when you go back to the library to take that get that reference book again, you'll know what pages to look for. All right, so here I'm ready to create my citation. I filled in everything I can fill in. <clears throat> I'm ready for EasyBib to do it, so I'll say create citation. And there it is. Analysis and History Barbie, Advanced Placement U.S. History. That's the name of that website, Smithsonian Institution 2012, Web 20. It's from the web, 23 September 2013. There's my URL, and look, there's my annotation. So when I have, you know, five or six of these now in my bibliography down below, in my works cited, 
I'm going to know why I thought that was a good place to go to, all right? So this is what you're going to start to do as you start to, to research your topic. Just keep easy bit open. Like I said, it's going to be your second brain. It's going to help organize that stuff for you. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, but Mrs. Midler, you told us not to use Google. Well, you can use Google. I just want you to use it right, all right? So if we put in Barbie doll, we'll probably get back a million web pages. I showed you how to do something a little different. Now, I'm a little smarter about Barbie. I'm a lot smarter about Barbie. I have some things to work with. So I'm going to go now back to the LMC Wiki, and I'm going to look at our databases and see what they have to say. Remember, I need four or more sources of information. So the one that I really like is Student Resource Center Junior. This is a great one for, great one for uh, middle school. So I'm going to click on that. You guys remember the password? Dragons. Dragons. Now I can come right over here. And I don't know anything, right? I just, I know a couple of words. So I know, I know Barbie doll seems to work. So I'm going to put in Barbie doll and I'm going to say search. And it gets some pretty interesting things. Um, I get a lot of subject terms over here. Something you know, that's trying to help me narrow things down. But under reference, I'm getting things from the Encyclopedia of World Biography. Ruth Handler, remember we read that she was the inventor. So I might want to check that one out. Ruth Handler Newsmakers, um, this comes from the Newsmakers uh, section of the database. I've got magazine articles, I've got academic journals, which is a big deal for teachers. They love academic journals because they know that some experts have read the articles before they go into that magazine. There's news, and there's multimedia. Multimedia! <gasps> Maybe there's pictures of Barbie. So I'm going to click on multimedia. <coughs> and when I get, oh, oh there's some videos. Can Look at this. One? This one says, video, um, Bertrand on Mattel's Barbie doll building toys. Can we watch it? Um, and then this one says, video, FBI warns of new high-tech Barbie doll. Really? Yeah. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. Let's watch it. High-tech Barbie doll. That's cool. Let's watch it. So I don't want to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to give me some interesting information about that Barbie video. And then, not always, but sometimes they'll actually give us the link to the Barbie video. Hold on, first things first. So let's say I watch this video and I learned something really cool about this Barbie. And I want to make sure that I get it into Easy Bib. Look what it's done for me right here. What is that? Oh, everything. It cited it. And the title. It cited it. It cited it. It totally cited it. <coughs> now I need to get this into Easy Bib. Easy Bib doesn't talk to this very easily, so I have to help it. So what am I going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? Control C. I'm going to do a Control C. I'm going to go to Easy, easy Bib. bib. And then in that little box. No, not that little box, because that little box says website. Was this a website? No, it was, it was a, a book? Newspaper? It was a database. Oh. No, go to the all of the It was a database. Yeah. So I'm gonna click on database. Whoops. My oopsie board is not working. Um, and look what it says right here. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna go into that box. I'm gonna control V. There it is. I'm gonna add a notation. Right, because that's what I do. This one was really cool. FBI Barbie. I tell you, Barbie. I tell we gotta see that video. Can we watch it? It's right now. All right, so I'm gonna come right down here and I'm gonna say, please create that citation for me. Please. It's gonna pop it right in to my already my work cited. So whether I'm using an open web search, I'm talking about a Google search, and I go to the Smithsonian, or whether I'm in the databases. I can still get all that information right there. It is. And there it is. There's the two of them right there. And now, if we have time here, we will see if we can see this Barbie video. Yay! Yay. Oh. Open. Yeah. It's just warning us before we go off that. Oh, oh that's fine. Oh, that's fine? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, that's cool. Can you go watch the channel? Oh, yeah. He is one of the yes. hottest toys this season, Video Barbie, but tonight the FBI has released a cyber warning to law enforcement all across the country, warning them that predators could use the new Video Barbie to videotape children. Our Mary Celatin spoke to one parent who recently bought the new doll. Barbie has always enjoyed the limelight, but now she's calling the shots, thanks to a video camera implanted in her chest, the lens disguised as a fashion pendant. 
kids see it as an irresistible merging of toy and technology, but the FBI cyber squad is worried the dog could become just as popular among pedophiles. The FBI says it has had cases of child pornography using... So what the FBI is worried about is, like, let's say there's somebody who likes to like videotape little kids. You know, he could be walking around or she could be walking around with that Barbie, and we, the little kid would think it's really cool and would come up and talk to it and not even know if the child is being videotaped. So it's privacy issues and it's sort of like, you know, people who like to take stalker. pictures. Stalker kind of stuff. So that's what that video is about. So that's kind of interesting because we started off talking about Barbie being advertised in the 1960s to Barbie being able to take video of you in the 2012. So, so well, you never know. <laughs> So this would be a really interesting thing to include probably in my research, right? So now I've got a video, I've got an article from the databases, and this, got, this is from the databases, it's a video, and I've also got the stuff I found on the Smithsonian site. So everything should go into this, to, to EasyBib, right? Okay, yes? I see that it says link at the bottom there. Do you think that link could be dropped into EasyBib? Uh, the link, um, I don't know, let's try it. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna go back to EasyBib. I think you can. I think if you go over and tell it to go to um, a video clip, let's see where we are here. Tell me if you see video. Television radio, because yeah. it came from a television radio station. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, um, I don't see it giving us a place to put in a link here. So let's go back. Um, back to the work side. You might have to play around and see if there's one for just video links. Let's see, do you see that? Yep, middle column, there. about seven down from the top. I see it. One more up. Yep. There. Let's try that one. Let's see. Yep. Oh, hmm. You'd have to auto site it, and the problem with auto siting is that auto siting. So even if you click auto site, you still have to fill in some information here for it. See all the red? Yeah. So you still have to go visit that site and get the name of the radio station or the television station or whatever. Like Boston Channel. So you can do that. But don't be afraid to try it because yeah, I'm like sure you're going to watch videos and want to cite them in here. But I want to warn you about something. This auto site <coughs> is very tricky because auto site will t uh, what, what a lot of people are going to do is they're going to hit auto site. They're going to cruise right down here and they're going to say create the citation. And when you create the citation from auto site, look what you get. I want to show you. That's tiny. NP, ND. That means no publisher, no date. If we start to see lots of NPs and NDs on your citations, that means you didn't take the time to help EasyBib figure out what was missing, and it's your job to do that, all right? This indicates that you're going really fast, and it's sloppy work, okay? So if we, if we see a lot of this, it's not good, all right? Well, it's small, but we're going to actually move all of this once it's done. Once your EasyBib, your intro, uh, your works site is done, we're going to export it into a Google Doc so your teachers can see it and it can go in there. So there's already a thing waiting for you out in your email, your Gmail that's been shared with you about how you're going to um, a, a document you're going to move that into, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do that together too. Or I'll show the teachers and then they're going to have to do it. <laughs> okay, any questions? I went fast. First thing you're going to open is? Yeah. I love it. You're gonna first thing you're gonna open is before you start your research, you're gonna Easy get in, bit. log into. Don't go anywhere, the bell doesn't release you. Easy bit first, and then start working from there. And if you guys have trouble with your topics, come and talk to me or ask your teacher. We'll get you narrowed down so you Does can the find bell stuff. Remind okay? the teacher?